Today, we're in Mendota, Illinois. We've come here to see this local freight, which has a Santa Fe B40-8W as part of its motive power. Dash 8s are already few and far between on BNSF, so seeing one in any capacity is a treat. But to see one that's still wearing its original colors and is still in active service is practically unheard of. The bad news is, this local freight ain't running today, so no Dash 8 action. However, we do get to see something that's just as cool. This hopper car that's been set out in front of the local engines has something wrong with one of its wheel sets. When cars break down like this, they're called bad orders. Bad order rail cars are usually cut from the train they're a part of and set aside for repairs either on designated rip tracks or wherever the railroad has space to put them. Here, the railroads just put the hopper wherever it can. Since this car is unfit to move long distances, it can't be taken to the repair shop, so all repairs must be done on site which means we get to watch the amazing and interesting process of changing a wheel on a multi-ton rail car. The first step is preparation. Safety is the cornerstone of operating a railroad, so adequately preparing the workspace is crucial for a safe and speedy repair. You can see one worker lay down a metal sleeper. This will provide a solid level base for the jacks to sit on, since ballast alone doesn't support localized weight very well. Watch right here. Those two tube looking things the crane just swung around are the jacks that's going to lift this rail car. Really, they're just automotive jacks, like what you might have in your garage, except they're almost the size of a person and can lift exorbitant amounts of weight. You can see the crane getting the jack into position. They're using the crane for this, because on the railroad, anything over 40 pounds must be lifted by a machine or by multiple people. Pretty soon, two crew members move the jack under the frame of the rail car and put the saddle on. The saddle is the part of the jack that makes contact with whatever's being lifted. It's extremely important to have the right saddle, because if you don't, there might not be proper contact or weight distribution with the object that's being lifted, and the whole thing could come crashing down. That's something you definitely don't want, especially with things like rail cars. Once the jacks were in place and given some power, the hopper began to be lifted. At first, it was only lifted a few inches, but eventually, it was lifted up by at least a foot, allowing the problematic truck to be rolled out from underneath the hopper. Since the friction between the wheels and the rails is so low, this extremely heavy truck can be moved by just one person. Another interesting thing is that there's basically nothing connecting the rail car to its trucks. That's why you always see them detached during derailments, because they're only held on by brake lines and gravity. Pretty soon, the new wheels were lowered into place. help from the crane, half the truck frame was lifted so the problematic wheel set could be removed. Just like the trucks barely being held onto the rail car, the wheels and axles are barely held onto the truck. If you ever get the chance to see a rail car up close, safely take a look at what's keeping the axle attached to the truck frame. You'll find that it's either a thin piece of metal, or in most cases, nothing at all. Eventually, the old wheels were whisked away as if they weighed nothing. That act right there can really give you an appreciation for the strength of hydraulics. 
Those wheel sets weigh about a ton each, and that relatively small crane had no problem picking them up. After that, the truck frame was picked up once again, so the new wheel set could be rolled into place. And with that, the freshly repaired truck can be rolled back into its proper position. I still think it's amazing how just one person can move all that tonnage. With the truck in place, the rail car can be lowered back on top of it. And that's pretty much a job well done. All that's left to do now is reattach brake lines and clean up, which won't take long at all. This opera car is now ready to get back out on the main line and roll for many more miles thanks to the diligent work of these men. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Also, maybe pass yourself by the merch shop. We've got a new design hopefully coming out soon. Anyways, till next time.